So my friends, I am here in Stockholm with Ivan on Tech. Ivan, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Good to be here with you, Catalina, on your channel. Super Amazing nice to, to see you. all of you guys watching Catalina in uh, Spanish. I ate uh, alfajores. I'm ready to go. Let's do it. Alfajores Argentinos, people. <laughs> he loved them. <laughs> yes. So for the people who don't know uh, Ivan, <laughs> Ivan on Tech is your channel. Yes. Yeah. And we're going to show them your courses at the end of the video as well. Is Absolutely. that okay? Absolutely. I am personally super excited to, to be here with you. And Ivan, this is the second video of a video series that I'm doing about how to invest in ICOs. Uh, because as we mentioned before, the current state of the market, people need to get educated. There are a lot of scams out there. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. we saw a boom last year. And um, well, m one of the main reasons why it, it, it happened is because pe these people are taking advantage of the lack of education of people. And uh, what do you think about that? Yeah, yeah, so I think it's both that the technology is new, the industry is new, everyone is new. Uh, even we who have been in this space for a few years, I've been in this since 2013, you're still learning new things every day, so it's all new. And especially if you're coming in with, um, for example, we have a lot of new people who came in during December, November hype, yeah. because that is when people discover Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, because they see the bull run, they see their neighbors get rich, True. their friends get rich, so they get interested and they buy something. Of course, they know very little. And that is that is, that is one of the, of the aims of these of these videos is st uh, for the people to stop trusting other people to p where to put yeah, their money. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, have yeah. to develop the abilities and the skills to make their own decisions. Ab absolutely. And so this is also the point with my channel yeah. that it is not investment advice. It's not financial advice. I'm only giving education about the core principles of blockchain, how it works, how it can be applied. And the same is for you, for you yes. as well. Yes. And, uh, and now it has calmed down a bit because now we see a bear market. People are more... Uh, relaxed people are also less interested in cryptocurrencies in general currently because the prices are down we have a boring market nothing really happens in the market but yes looking back a few months it was completely insane a lot of people invested a lot of people made a lot of money but also lost a lot of money that, that is the stories you never hear people who who lose <laughs> everything absolutely and the Latino community who is also watching uh, they were very damaged by the scams like this is a message for the Latino community. Bitcoin and blockchain technology is not a scam. It's not a product. It's not a company. You have to get educated. And uh, that is something that they are looking uh, in a wrong way. They, they, uh, they relate Bitcoin and blockchain technology. They, they, they see it as a scam. And that's not true. Like, that is the so what has happened in Latino community? Well, it's so a lot many, of, well, that's uh, another topic. But yeah, so many people were scammed by either by ICOs or Ponzi schemes. And it was yeah. a tsunami of Ponzi schemes. And and one of the messages that I'm trying to tell them, well, if you were scammed, that means that you invested your money in something that you don't understand. Yeah, right? I, I think it is just in mainstream Bitcoin and blockchain has this negative picture that you think of terrorist financing, you think of <laughs> uh, drugs, you think of prostitution. And even my grandmother came uh, the other day and said really? like, that, that it is a pyramid scheme because, you know, in Russia, there was a huge pyramid scheme, scheme called MMM. Uh, okay. Maybe any of you know, but uh, it was like the biggest, I think it is the biggest pyramid scheme in the world, MMM. Wow, wow. And so in Russia, they, the mainstream is basically telling people that Bitcoin is like MMM. And MMM exactly. is the worst thing that has happened ever in Russia, maybe. So my grandmother came to me as like, Bitcoin is MMM. And then I could explain to her that, no, 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 it's decentralized electronic cash and then explain to her what it means. But yes, I think there are a lot of misinformation and a lot of information from the news you see in newspaper. People who simply don't understand, maybe they have an agenda. I think many newspapers have an agenda to put this whole community in a bad light. But the thing is, it's not really working nowadays. People are understanding that, you know what, these arguments with money laundering and terrorism financing they're not really working nowadays no. because you can use it for that but you can also use it to for example help people in countries where the inflation is crazy to help uh, people in countries where oh, there is no international transfers so we it's, can talk uh, about that in, in uh, the next video in the next video absolutely <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so for the people who's watching the people if they are watching this video is because they are not that people they are trying to learn so let's start with the first step that people need to uh start with to analyze icos whether they are scams or they are good projects and the first step that in my opinion is the most easy one um is the team because it's yeah, something yeah, that yeah. really is easy to analyze and to identify if you see an anonymous team if you see something really wrong with this 
first step, you can put a red flag and say, mm, I don't believe in this, something is not good in this one. What do you think about yeah, the team? Yeah, yeah. What are the qualities so, that we need to find in a team and where to find this information? Yeah, obviously it's important. Uh, and the, the information about the team is usually on the website or in the white paper. Yes. And uh, you also see scams using, for example, celebrity pictures or just you know stock pictures of people, uh, like model pictures and saying, this is our CTO. So you need to be careful and look at the LinkedIn, look at the GitHub. Uh, obviously you can never be 100% sure yes. uh, and therefore I think you should try to find recordings maybe they do interviews so many ICOs do interviews on my channel and this is yes. very important for them to do because uh, in many cases you want to build some kind True, of personal that is a good sign that is a good yeah, sign yeah, yeah. yeah. If, they, uh, if they are confident enough to come on a live stream to answer people's questions to really stand there basically naked and uh, explain <laughs> and defend their project it's a good sign and also you build some kind of relationship with uh, the investors with uh, everyone who is watching with the community so that is very important how and active they are also in conferences in the community in social media yeah as well go, right go to for example telegram take a look at uh, their telegram and see are there are they helping new uh, people to onboard to understand their project to understand their uh, community use case and see if they really care because some you see some groups that are only about you know lambos and uh, moon yeah. and yeah. Uh, I, I think it is a red flag because you, you need to be talking about the most important things which is the project and the technology behind the yes. project. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and besides that, when you realize that they are very serious about like bringing value and connecting with the with the audience, you have to study their background, right? Right? Because we are investing not only in technology here. This is technology people, but we're also investing in humans. Yeah, These yeah, are the yeah. people who are going to really make this happen, and it's crucial to identify their backgrounds, their experience, their education in the blockchain space. If they have a good leader, right? And the engineers. Absolutely. And so how can you do that? Well, you can take a look at LinkedIn, as we mentioned, try to see do they have uh, endorsements from other people? Do they have uh, publications? Maybe some of them have published papers. Next, you go and look at GitHub, actual code commits. If there is an engineer, go to his or her yeah. GitHub and see what kind of code that person has produced in the past uh, and see if it is good. I mean, see, of course, if you're not an engineer, you might not understand it, but just see if there is any activity. The engineers are like the brain of the project anyway. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but next, after that, try to find live recordings. If they answer questions, do uh, ask, ask me anything sessions, very important. Okay, that is the first step. If you don't find uh, this information or something is wrong with this, put a red flag and continue with another project, okay? If that is okay, we move, move, move on to the next step, which is number two, why do they need a blockchain, right? Because most ICOs, they do not need a blockchain. And uh, we know that this technology is less efficient right now and it is more expensive. So that is the main question. Why are they doing it in a decentralized way? Yeah, exactly. And uh, I mean, you can, you can make the claim that uh, a lot of projects do not need a blockchain, but it's all at uh, looking at individual cases yeah, and exactly. uh, asking a few questions, for example, do they solve something that is not transparent and they make it transparent? So blockchain can be used for that. Or are they in an industry with a lot of middlemen and they want to remove middlemen? That is also a good use case of a blockchain. Do they actually need a database where the records are saved forever? That is good use, use case of the blockchain. And uh, I think it can apply can be applied to any industry really, but just ask these simple questions and yeah, you will... It's an individual uh, work that you have to do. And that is one question. And the other question uh, regarding this topic is because one, yeah, one question is whether they need a blockchain. But on the other uh, side of the, of the coin, we, 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 have, we are going to see a lot of this happening even in the following years that airlines, companies, services, they are going to have their own token, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, it's yeah, going yeah. to be in a digital way. And as we learned in the previous video, in the complementary video, we know that uh, ICOs are smart contracts running on the Ethereum blockchain, for example, yeah, yeah. and they issue their own tokens. Uh, and those are like digital assets that can be programmed with different features and uh, characteristics and functionalities. So we're going to see a lot of uh, companies and uh, having their own tokens uh, what should we analyze when we see that um, scenario so th that is a bit different because yes. uh, you have to make a dis distinction between decentralized protocols like bitcoin there's no company behind it you don't care if some company goes bankrupt bitcoin True. is still here it's a decentralized protocol but of course if you have for example your airline putting its loyalty points on the blockchain it means that it is still dependent on the airline because you kind of peg True. your 
tokens to the real world and the, to the services and products that the company delivers. Yeah. So in that sense, those are, are two different kinds of tokens and ICOs, and it's important to make... But it is going to happen anyway, so you see it coming? Yeah, 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 I think it's a very important step for many companies to do so. Uh, for example, with loyalty points, it's just so much easier to get new customers. You can airdrop, you can make all of these uh, programmable tokens work in different ways to incentivize your customers to get them back and to really move your loyalty program from a very kind of local centralized to a decentralized and yeah. to global and yeah. the permissionless that you maybe you have uh, your shop here but then someone in Africa can get your loyalty point in their cryptocurrency wallet for example yeah and you can make a new customer that way so it's just examples and the truth is that we cannot even imagine all of the use cases of what what people will do with cryptocurrencies and tokens in their business we cannot sit here and talk about all the use cases because yeah. we simply don't know it's it's like talking about the internet in the 80s yeah, I yeah, mean yeah. Who, who would have imagined Facebook and, uh, and YouTube and streaming it's not possible we're still in the emerging side of the, yes. the technology. So yeah, that yeah, was yeah. step number two. Now let's dive into step number three, which is also super basic. And it is all about like analyzing the white paper, paper itself. And for me, uh, they should be able to provide this information very easily in a very easy and comprehensive way. Like what exactly are they doing and what problem they are solving and how they are going to do it but in a very understandable way. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you think about that, the white paper? So I agree, it needs to be, if there, if there is a lot of fluff in the white paper, you don't really understand what they're talking about. Sometimes it is uh, like this, you're reading a white paper and you're just feeling stupid because you don't understand it. Yeah, and yeah. in many cases, it is not your fault, it's the fault of the white paper they because they, they themselves don't know what they're doing. they like, we want to do blockchain, ICO, VR, AR, artificial, like everything, all the buzzwords in one. And this is a red flag. If they cannot explain it sim True. simply, it is, uh, uh, it is something is wrong. Yeah, Absolutely. super basic like that. And to add uh, to this topic, to the third uh, part, is whether the, it can be implemented, right? how fast and how many people can use this right now whether it can be implemented in a very easy way and how scalable is the project as well yeah. talking about ethereum you know more than and about uh, that, that I do. many icos are in trouble currently because you have all of these ideas and projects on yes. ethereum ethereum is not fast enough so people are hoping for another infrastructure like eos or yes. cardano so i think EOS especially is important for cryptocurrency community currently because many of ICOs want to switch to EOS and in order to deliver on their promises really True. and therefore I think it's very important to follow the infrastructure developments in the space because many ICOs will not be able to achieve their dreams on Ethereum. True. They will need something else. That is something to take into consideration as well. So those were the three steps for this video, for the second video of this video series about how to invest in ICOs. And I have a personal question for Ivan before yes. you go. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. what are you excited the most about blockchain? It's very basic, but yeah. I think we know. Uh, <laughs> so I, I think the most important thing is that you really focus on the people in countries who lack, for example, financial inclusion, all of these entrepreneurs in countries who simply cannot get funding because there is no capital in their country. I mean, this is why I'm doing it. Also, people in countries nice. where there is hyperinflation, you lose value every single day. Absolutely. This is where I come from originally, also from Belarus. And th this is the most important aspect. And then on top of that, yes, you have the whole ICO, um, ICO industry. Many of these people will do ICOs because now, now they are part of the global economical system. And then you have all of the other craziness we do on top of that. But th that is the core for me, at least. Amazing. Financial inclusion coming up next and it's a pleasure to share uh, the the willingness to educate people awesome. to, to, with you. Thank you, Ivan. Thank you so much. We killed it. Perfect. See you in the next video. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye, guys.